Hi, what I have here on the workbench today is a MUS2 MT13S thermal camera and digital multimeter combo device. This meter has a 192 by 192 resolution thermal imaging camera and a 10,000 counts multimeter built in. Banggood sent in this meter for me to do a review. As usual, I will leave a product link in the video description below for those who are interested in getting one after watching this video. Now, on this channel, I had reviewed a similar device, the Tooltop ET12S, a few months back, and that meter had a thermal resolution of 90 by 120, and that was a 4,000 counts meter. So definitely this meter I have here seems to be an enhanced model. Let me actually grab that one so you can see these two meters side by side. From a glance, you can see that besides the fact that this one is branded as Tooltop and the other one is branded as Must Tool, and perhaps the Must Tool one has some additional functions given the extra row of icons here, these two meters are virtually identical, and they both have touchscreen and are touchscreen operated. Now, the touchscreens are slightly different. This one is darker, this one is lighter, but the sizes are the same. And if you turn it over, you can see that the reverse side looks identical as well. So clearly these two were essentially made by the same manufacturer and just branded differently. This kind of practice of using different branding with the same product is very common among Chinese products. I just did some Googling and sure enough you can get the same meter under the Two Top brand instead of Must Tool. Now for the Two Top, the model number is the ET13S instead of the MT13S. Anyway, I actually find the combination of a multimeter and thermal camera quite fascinating. For me, I just don't particularly like cramming too many features into a single device. Kind of like the saying, jack of all trades, master of none. But I do see some potential use cases though. For instance, if you are an auto tech and need to do some engine diagnostics and auto electronics repair, this meter could potentially fit the bill as it's tiny and can easily fit in your pocket. Now, the only thing I would worry about a little bit is the hard plastic shell and not sure if it would survive the potential abuse in a tough environment like auto repair shop. All right, let me power both of these meters on and we'll do a quick comparison. As you can see by default, the meter boots into the infrared camera mode. And for the MT13S, it definitely took a lot longer to boot up compared to the ET12S. And that, I think, is primarily because this one has much higher spec IR sensor compared to the MUS tool. In fact, it has more than three times the thermal pixel count, and in theory, that should translate into much sharper thermal image. And if you take a look, let's uh, take them out, and you can see that if I put my hand behind it, hopefully you can see both of these thermal camera images. And the thermal image quality is actually not bad on this MT13S, and I definitely will put a few more thermal images on the screen here so you can see it for yourself. Now you did hear the shutter clicking in the background. I'm not sure if you noticed that, and that is because these are thermal cameras. They're doing some self-calibration here, so that is normal. Now, of course, you can compare the image quality to a dedicated thermal camera of similar thermal resolution, but what do you expect from a tiny lightweight multifunction device like this? With a refresh rate of 20 Hz, it actually is quite useful. Of course, we don't have any specifications for the NETD or noise equivalent temperature difference for this meter, but for the price point, I think this level of performance is more or less to be expected. The internal storage is only at 3.5 megabytes, and I calculated based on the images I took, it is only sufficient for holding up to 40 images, give or take, which is not a lot. But I suppose you can always move the stored images onto your computer through the USB interface, and the meter does show up as a USB drive when the USB connection is turned on in the manual. And if you take another closer look, you will see that the user interface is ever so slightly different. And we also actually have a real-time clock here by the look of it. So this is definitely an improvement over the older model. While we're still in this thermal camera mode, let's actually take a look at some of the settings here. So to get to the settings, I click on the gear icon and I go to IR camera. Oh, it seems we do have a few more options here. So let's actually take a look at the older version here. 
So let's go to IR camera. Yeah, you can see on this 13S, we now have different color palettes. We have a few more of them. And perhaps the most important one is that uh, we now have different temperature levels, high and low and auto. In the 12S, we only have the update speed. So I assume this temperature level is first selecting the temperature range you are currently measuring. Let's change it to high to see what we got here. So let's go back. And now we're supposedly measuring a higher temperature range. Now if I put my hand over here, of course it's calibrating. Mm, it looks like it's a little bit more grainy now. And let's take a look at the background here. Yeah, you're not able to see much. So this is definitely for higher temperature range. Now, if I take a look at the manual here, it actually didn't say much about where the cutoff temperature is. You can see here the temperature range is minus 20 to 550 degrees, but it did not tell me which range is for what. Now, if past experience is any guidance, that cutoff is probably at around 200 degrees. That's just my guess. So let's go back here and uh, let's change it back to low. Yeah, let's take a look again. So the thermal camera does take a few seconds, as you can see here. Let's take a look at the background. Now you can see a lot more details. In my opinion, the thermal camera is a huge improvement compared to the older version. As you can see here, not only the resolution is higher, but also the image quality is much better. You can see on the right hand side, the 12S, that is much grainier compared to what we got here. So this is definitely a lot more useful as the 192 by 192 resolution is fairly decent. All right, now let's take a look at the multimeter functionality. And by the way, you can choose to boot into either the thermal camera mode or the multimeter mode when initially powered on. And given that the thermal camera mode is on the slower side, especially during the boot up time, if I were using this meter, I would set it default to multimeter mode, as that is probably the mode I would be using the most. So let me just show you the setting here. So to change that, I can go up here and change to system settings. And you can see here, the power boot, that's really your boot up mode. Right now it's set to IR camera. We can change it to multimeter. And the next time when we boot up, you'll be directly going into the multimeter mode. So that is the setting here. And of course, to switch to the digital multimeter, we can just press the IR DMM button here, and that will get you into the DMM mode. For the MT13S, the multimeter has been upgraded to 10,000 counts. So it will definitely be a lot more useful than the 4,000 counts found in the ET12S. Now I have to say that the UI seems to be rather crowded. You can see here, we have a lot of things going on here. And this is especially true if you compare that to the UI display on the 12S, as we do have a few more functions. So that actually added an additional row of touch screen buttons here. And everything seems to be a little cramped. And you can see the actual display for the digits are actually even smaller, I think, compared to that on the ET12S, because now we have these extra buttons. The same comments I had with the ET12S is that the leads supplied are angled. And because the jacks are on the side, it does feel a little bit awkward when plugged in. But uh, it would be nice if they could supply some straight leads instead of these angled ones. If you take a look at the user manual, you will see that the specified accuracy depends on the range. And give or take is largely within the 2% that is specified, which for a portable meter like this, that is not too bad. Anyway, let's output a few voltages using my EDC MV216 a voltage standard and get a sense of the DC voltage measurement readings here. Currently, the voltage standard is outputting 100 millivolts. Let's hook it up. Ah, this is where I don't like the auto detection here and is thinking it's actually doing the ohm measurement. So let's change it to voltage. And no problem, you can see that we're showing 100 millivolts. Let's actually change it straight to one volt here. No problem, let's do two, three, of course, this is only a 2% accuracy meter, so you can see that we are largely in line with what is outputted from the voltage standard. That is actually good. So let's just go all the way up to 10 volts.
As you can see, the display update rate is actually quite fast, which is definitely not bad. Now, the bar graph is a little bit of distracting in my opinion, as it pretty much has the same update rate as the actual display. You can see there's a huge delay here, and definitely it's not that fast. So in my opinion, it actually doesn't serve the purpose, as you won't be able to tell the fast changing voltage measurement, even with the bar graph here. Another thing I notice is that in the millivolt range, for some reason we don't get the last digit here. Now, this is in auto mode. And if you take a look at uh, ET12S, you can see that the millivolt range has a 0.1 millivolt resolution, whereas here we only get down to 1 millivolt. Now let's actually take a look to see if that is a setting issue. And by the way, this meter can support manual ranging as well. So let's actually go to the settings here to see if we can figure out. So let's actually change that hold button, change that to range mode. So at least we can see if we can change the range manually here. So let's do range. No. So this is interesting. This meter has a higher count, but at millivolt range, it loses one digit of resolution. That is really unfortunate. And as we have discussed before in the ET12S review, you can see this meter also supports charting capability here. Now, if we come here, you can see that we can start the charting by press the play button, which is not very obvious, but that's the way you do it. And you can see that the recording had started. Of course, when you're done, you press the stop. If you recall, in my review of the ET12S, I complained that the meter was not able to export the capture data, which makes the data capture pretty much useless. Now, in this case, because they have implemented the data export and save functionality, I think this will make this functionality a lot more useful. Now let's take a look at the AC measurement, and I'm just gonna briefly measure the mains voltage. Uh, take a look here. So this is the uh, mains voltage. And you can see it's a 118 volts, no problem. And the measurement is actually pretty fast, as you can see here. The auto ranging is definitely on the faster side. One feature added in this model is the non-contact voltage detection mode. So let's actually take a look at how well it behaves here. So here I have a light wire. And I'm rotating it. And you can see that we are able to pick up on this end this side has the light wire and this side has the neutral so that is no problem but the sensitivity is definitely not as high as it should be but nevertheless if you are close enough you are able to pick up the light wire here all right now let's take a look at the resistance measurement mode and for that i'm switching to ohm let's first short out the leads and we're getting roughly zero ohm reading so, okay, so let's actually start with a 1K resistor here. No problem, we're reading roughly 1K. Yeah, I think the auto ranging speed is actually quite good, which is similar to what we have observed with the fourth thumb counts ET12S. Now, I think the ohm range definitely deserves a big thumbs up given the measurement speed here. So let's actually take another look with a 100 ohm precision resistor here. Now you can see that actually the reading is a little bit off, but that said, it is definitely within the range as this is not a precision meter, but the measurement speed is definitely very impressive. Okay, let's move on to the diode mode. Now, if you recall when I reviewed the ET12S, I mentioned one of the shortcomings is that for that meter, it was not able to measure the forward voltage drop of anything beyond the standard silicon diode. So let's actually see how the M13S behaves. And the first diode we're gonna measure is this uh, silicon diode. Let's uh, take a look. And you can see we have no problem measuring the forward voltage drop. So let's swap it out with a red LED. And let's see, I can't really see from this end which side is which. Let's uh, try it out first. Yeah, so you can see that we are able to measure the forward voltage drop of a red LED and it's very fast. So that is good. And now let's uh, switch it to a white LED. Now this is a LED that many meters, including the five and a half digit multimeter I just reviewed from the Unity, 
was not even able to measure the forward voltage drop. So let's see how this meter behaves. And you can see, let's uh, do it this way. And as you can see, we're actually able to measure the forward voltage drop of a white LED. This is excellent. Let's now take a look at the capacitance measurement mode. Now I'm glad to see on the spec the MT13S supports up to 99 millifarads. If you recall the ET12S only supported up to 100 microfarads. So the extended range definitely makes this meter more attractive. Actually I just took a look at the spec that is supplied with the MT13S. You can see that the maximum capacitance listed here is actually 100 microfarads. Interesting. So there's definitely some discrepancy here. Now, I'm not sure which one is correct. Of course, the only way to find out is do some real measurement. All right, let's change to capacitance measurement mode. As you can see, with just the leads attached, we're already getting a 16 nanofarads reading. And unfortunately, there's no way for you to rail out the readings. So this meter is definitely not going to be that useful for measuring small capacitance. Let's start with a 100 nanofarads capacitor. And this one, if you recall, the measurement reading is consistently low and roughly at 85 nanofarads. So let's give it a go. So I think the reading actually is on the lower side. Now let's take a look at the 22 microfarads capacitor. It's measuring 19. That shouldn't be a problem, but the speed is definitely quite slow. Next, let's figure out whether the spec maximum measurement range is whether 100 microfarads or 99 millifarads. For that, I'm going to use a 1 millifarads capacitor, and this one you can see here, 1000 microfarads. And if the spec is indeed only 100 microfarads, then we're not able to measure this capacitor. So let's actually take a look and verify the spec. and it's relatively slow. But eventually you can see we are able to measure the 1.1 millifarads. So I think the spec 99 millifarads is probably correct. But the capacitance measurement is definitely on the slow side. And now let's take a look at the continuity test. And if you recall, the continuity test on the ET12S was not latched. So let's take a look at here. So It is actually pretty fast, and now this is definitely latched. No problem. Now, I'm not sure why they bother to include a dedicated temperature measurement range, as the temperature you can see here is displayed as secondary in all measurement ranges. But let's take a look here. As you can see here, in this temperature measurement mode, you actually don't get that first decimal reading on the main display here. So to me, they probably should have just removed this option from the manual. And that's pretty much all the functions that you can find on this meter. Let's take a brief look at some of the settings here so that we can see what we got. So this USB mode, that's actually for you to connect to your PC, as we mentioned earlier. And uh, the storage, you can see here, we have, we have like 10 pictures here that already took up 25% of the usable storage here. And you can see the storage now is only 77% because we only have a three and a half meg storage on board. And we do have, you can see here, these are some of the data logging we did earlier. And for the multimeter mode, let's see, we can select a default mode. Right now it is set to auto, but I find it quite annoying as we have shown earlier. I'd rather put directly into DC measurement mode instead. And for this hold and range button, you can define it to be either hold or range. I prefer to set it to range. And what else? We can do a system setting. You can select the auto time off and shut down. And let's see here, backlight. Right now we're at 60%, which is bright enough already. Anyway, so that's pretty much everything that is on this meter. Now I do want to open it up and take a look inside briefly, but I don't anticipate too much change 
from the overall design we found in the ET12S. Of course, the warranty has been voided. As you can see on the silk screen here, the PCB was actually made by FuelTech. As expected, the layout is largely the same, and on this side you can see there is not much to it. There is the LCD screen. Let me just pry it open a little bit. You can see that underneath there is nothing else. Then let's flip it over and take a look at the other side. This side of the board does look slightly different compared to the ET12S, as that is to be expected because we have a different IR sensor and we have a different DMM chip. Unfortunately, as you can see, the markings on this main application processor has been etched off. So is the marking on this DMM chip. Towards the top here, I think we have a couple of these YF08E level shifters. Presumably, that's to interfacing the IR sensor to the processor here. And here we have, I think, that's a touch screen controller. And this is a windbound flash memory for the application processor or microcontroller. And up here we have a EEPROM that is for the digital multimeter and a solid state relay here. The digital multimeter section is actually fairly bare bone and we only have this single PTC for input protection. In case you are wondering how the NCV detection is done, you can see on this side of the board, on the top towards the edge, there is some edge traces. Let me just try to make it a bit more clear here. And you can see that these traces are responsible for detecting the electric field. Now let's briefly take a look at the current consumption. Currently we're in the multimeter mode. You can see we're drawing 100 milliamps. Given that the battery itself is a one amp hour battery, you can expect roughly 10 hours runtime in multimeter mode. And now let me switch to IR mode. You can see the current draw significantly increased. So we're drawing about 250 milliamps, give or take. In this mode, you can expect it to run for about four hours. Anyway, I think the combination of a thermal camera and a multimeter is definitely interesting, and certainly it has its own space in the market. Compared to the ET12S I reviewed a month ago, I think the MT13S has made significant improvements over that version, and only costs slightly more. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you liked the video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching and I will catch up with you next time.